Firstly, I'm a middle-class white male man, so I'm going to fry in this sunshine. <laughs> I'm not actually officially an artist, I'm a graphic designer, and I do believe there are interesting things going on in graphic design, as much as there are in art. The two main things that I, I did for the Biennale are a series of artworks, which are around the island, plus the identity. And I think I'll talk a little bit about the identity first, so you can understand the context of the artworks. You've probably all got a, a booklet and seen the, the signage. It may look quite complex, it's actually quite simple. It was all done in our studio in London. Um, I don't know how many of you are interested in typography. Some people find it extremely dull. Uh, it's usually 18-year-old spotty boys who put their hand up. So. Um, but I, I, everything I do is based on typography and that's because it's very closely connected with language and letter forms are not um, neutral things. They provide a tone of voice for a text and the reason I continue to draw letter forms and typefaces is because I want to speak in a voice that's never been spoken before at this time now. It's about the spirit of the age. And so a lot of the typefaces you'll see, the, well most of them are drawn by my studio. Uh, there are some very obscure references in it. For instance, the one that says, let's see, um, beauty and beauty of distance is taken off the plane that dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Uh, yes, that's a good laugh, isn't it, that one? Um, the one that says free is actually based on signage from around London, where I'm, uh, you know, where my studio is. I want to give some of those extremely British I mean, one of the curses of being a designer is that you notice detail all the time. So, for instance, uh, when I was watching a TV program the other day, they're holding up school cards and they're holding up their number eight upside down, and it made me absolutely furious. And I was probably the only person in the whole world that would notice it. But uh, and when you watch a World War II film, they have Helvetica in, and you know it's designed in the film 1950s, so it wouldn't be in there on a door sign. But um, that curse is also very good because you walk around and you see the eyes differently, see the world differently through different eyes. So you're always noticing letter forms and little architectural details and they always find their way into the work. So typography is really is a vehicle um, of ideolo ideological expression as much as anything else. Um, so that's why it interests me. And as a design you can take the photograph, you can control the layout, but to draw the, the letter forms is the final piece in the jigsaw. The actual nature of the design is quite closely based on some of the graphics that were used for the folk recordings by Harry Smith. And he's a guy um, who went around America recording folk music at the time of McCarthyism, when there was this feeling in America that they should root out all impure non-American activities. And his view was a completely alternative view of America, and, a very, and actually a much more valid one. And that kind of collection of curiosities um, is also part of the theme of um, the BNR, all these people around the world doing work which is um, about survival in an age, a very, very turbulent political and social age. Um, so that is the reason for this kind of uh, jumbled together, for want of a better phrase, uh, design. Um, in addition, as I mentioned, to the identity, uh, there are five artworks located around the, um, around the island. And because I'm a graphic designer, I'm slightly outside the art world. I really, I wanted to comment on the whole idea of um, artists going to Biennale in both positive and negative way. And also refer to the history of Cockatoo Island. So this is the, the first piece. It says the cockatoos still continue to preen themselves while we all applaud. And um, it's about um, all of us coming along, looking at this art, at the art, and then clapping all the artists, and the artists being the cockatoos. I hope it's fairly explicit. Um, it's about the, the grim um, process of coming to an exhibition, traipsing around for hours and hours, and thinking, why are you doing it? And then suddenly you have a moment of inspiration, a work connects with you. And it makes all of that terrible, terrible journey worthwhile. And over by one of the tunnels there, there's a direct reference to the history of Cockatoo Island. Because I, I work in sort of the anti-advertising area, I'm actually quite familiar with the tools of advertising. So the phrases are like advertising slogans. Um, 
I mean, I you rewrite something like this 20 or 30 times, even though it's one simple phrase, because you want to um, say something quite intense, but you have to say it in a short attention span kind of way. And actually, I write quite a lot on Twitter, design principles, because you have to say something in 140 characters, and that takes quite a long time. But that editing is really good, actually. I mean, we, we're very careful, actually, who we work with. Um, we have worked with multinationals, but because we work with anti-advertising groups, you can't go off and work for Coca-Cola and that yeah, kind sure. of thing. So um, it tends to be cultural institutions in our own work. Um, I mean, other commercial projects, we, um, we did the past two David Bowie albums. <laughs> And we work, used to work with Damien Hirst quite a lot, but um, that is, the relationship between an artist and graphic designer is quite a tense one, especially if you feel you're doing culturally valid work and you're actually trampled on by an artist, which often happens because they think they know how to do everything better. And actually, there are some artists who do, but there are some artists who are better off leaving it to graphic designers, you know, to enhance their work. And what so. was Damien Hirst like? What was he like? Drunk? I don't know. What he... <laughs> um, actually, he's of all the artists I work with, he's one of the best because you know he doesn't do his own work. Uh, he gets someone else to execute it, and uh, he understood what Kevin Simon did. Uh, there is another artist whose name I won't mention because it's been recorded, but resigned after three days working on the project because she was such a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> and her tent, not that I'm mentioning any names and her blankets and that kind of thing, and um, uh, she just couldn't let us do our stuff. So. And actually working with a lot of um, artists, they did, do seem to be a lot more commercial than us. So there is, there is this, this talk's going wrong, there's this, this inverted snobbery with artists. They think the graphic designers are commercial beings and that's it, and actually they are very happy to receive commissions. And some artists work for, we actually work with one in particular who, um, we were asked to do an absolute vodka advert and we turned it down because we don't endorse products but they came to us to do their absolute vodka advert so I mean part of the problem with many graphic designers, many artists, they, when they look at design they define the, the function of it so narrowly and there is a cultural function to design and there's an improvement of society function to design and there's a beautifying function to design which are all over and above any commercial notion of what a piece of graphic design would do and they are just as important I think any advice? Uh, <laughs> well, there's so much advice I mean I can give, but um, the thing is, don't be scared by a lack of experience. It's actually a very good thing if you're talking about new designers, you know, because um, the fact that you don't know how to do things is actually very positive because it'll make you uh, produce brilliant work in a way. Because you're not, you know, design can be very easily done easily. You know, you can sit in your nice office and you can do your work and you get paid your money and you'll go home. But if you care and you're intense about your work, that's when you produce brilliant work. And I think the moment when most people like that is when they leave college. Because so they're not quite sure how to do things and they are hungry for work. So it's like when a band does their first record, you know. So it's a very positive thing if you're a new designer um, to have that energy. Um, and there is no right way to be a graphic designer. It's this thing about a portfolio where you go to different design companies and you'll, um, you worry about getting a job and your portfolio is very, becomes more and more commercial. I think you've just got to follow your passion. It's important, I think, because that will interest people. And don't be frightened if you don't become a graphic designer in the end as well. The, the point is actually for you to be happy, not to be a graphic designer necessarily. And graphic design could make you miserable. Could, instead, it's better to have a, a path onto something else. Some advice.